I'm Catherine Baird, CEO of Ethics Game. And one of my projects for the past, oh, about a year has been really doing a deep dive into AI ethics. How with these new emerging technologies are we supposed to treat each other and the machines? It turns out that as we moved into ChatGPT, Claude, and other technologies that can create content, we wound up being very nervous about how we understand ourselves in relationship to machines. So we have existential questions and then practical questions. One of the first existential questions that people ask is, what does it mean to be human? When am I supposed to be creative versus the machine taking over all creativity? So at a practical level, the question we ask is, how do we embrace progress? When do we keep our own creativity? When do we use these new tools? And how do we think about our relationship with them? The second existential question becomes, who can we trust? How do we know what's true? And how do we know what's false? And so as we think about that question, the practical application becomes, take a look at the contracts, take a look at the agreements. What is it that people have promised each other as we are going to use these technologies? And if you can't find them and you don't know what they are, don't engage the technologies, don't buy the tool, or push the vendor for clarification. It's turning out that the providers of these tools are being very creative and responsive to the questions that people are asking. The third existential question is, will everybody be able to participate? How do we make sure that people can thrive? The practical question that goes with this is, who can afford it? Currently, about 95% of all of the big technology usage is being done by companies or big organizations with lots of money. 5% is being done by states and state agencies, which is a very tiny amount when you think about the strength of all these technologies. And then you have people who don't have access to computers, who may not be in a place where there's broadband or any other access, and that's in the United States. We're not even talking about globally. What do we do with people with disabilities? What do we do about people who may not be facile and not know how to work with the technology, but are being thrown into a situation where they have to? Those are the kinds of questions that we ask when we're using and or purchasing the technology. The fourth big existential question is, are we safe? How do we protect ourselves from bad users, from those who go onto the dark web, from those who would steal our data? And the answer to that becomes partnering with the vendors. Do you know what they're doing with your data? Have you agreed on how your data is going to be used? Do you as a user make sure that you're being responsible, not going exploring off into the dark web or not seeing wonder where a little rabbit trail will take you? How are you being a responsible user of technology? The final piece that we ask are the big hairy questions. How will employment be disrupted? Given how hard it is and how much it is required to keep these things going and to develop them, what is that going to mean for the environment? What's that going to mean for the climate? We don't know the answers to these questions, but we have to keep asking them. And as we keep asking them and pressuring the people who are providing these technologies and thinking about our own responsible use, we will begin to get a shape for how our future together will unfold. As you think about both the existential questions and then your practical application, you will be participating in what we call ethics making, shaping our understanding of how we and technology are going to intersect over the next foreseeable future. Thank you. <music>